This question has to be one of the most difficult ones to answer. What is the best camera uh, in 2023? And the reason this is very difficult is because I encourage you to go right now and do a Google search. Type in best cameras 2023. This is what showed up for me. Anywhere from a $1,400 Olympus to a $30,000 Hasselblad, you know? <laughs> Talking about cameras, it's just such a broad uh, industry. It's, it's almost impossible to pinpoint which is the best one. And there's many key points to remember. So I'm gonna go down a list and I'm gonna try to make this video very comprehensive and help you understand a little bit more about not only photography, but the gear you use for different types of photography. The first question, and this is probably one of the most important things out there. If you're looking for a camera, what do you need the camera for? Is this a hobby? Are you gonna go into business? Are you gonna just start stock photography? Like what do you need a camera for? Are you interested only in photography or videography? So these are things you have to keep in mind when you're looking for a camera. In this video, I'm gonna focus mainly on people starting out in photography because if you already have a photography business, then you know about cameras, you know about lenses, you know about all this. This video is specifically for anybody starting out that's looking for a good camera and something that's gonna help you generate more income and stay up to date with all the changes and everything that's happening in the world of photography. So for now, let me talk about the different types of photography. And I'm gonna start off with real estate photography, street photography, landscape photography, studio photography. And here I'm gonna include what's portraits and products. Then we have sport photography, and that's gonna include weddings and wildlife. And our stock photography encompasses all these types of photography. So there's all those types of photography. Now let's get into different types of cameras. We have the medium formats, we have full frame, crop sensors, APS-C crop sensors, or micro four thirds. These are the ones that I'm gonna uh, touch on. I'm not gonna get into the, the medium formats because these are in the thousands of dollars, like many thousands. And if you're looking into one of these, then you're probably not watching this video. To explain the different types of photography, it's important to know that these exist. So when you're doing landscape photography, a medium format camera is probably gonna be one of your best choices because they have a bigger sensor, they capture a lot more light, they're a lot sharper, much better in low light, and they will give you much better images. Now, I'm not saying the R5 is not good for landscape, it is, but the medium formats have their own level. <laughs> I'll give you an analogy here shortly, but the downside of a medium format is that they can only do three or four or five frames per second, where the R5 can give me 20. Uh, this is not necessary for landscape, which is why a lot of people prefer the medium formats. Now, full frame cameras, they go, the spectrum is everywhere. You can do many different things with these cameras. Then you have your crop sensors, which are typically entry levels, and that's the APS-C uh, crop sensors. Usually these are a little bit uh, less expensive than a full frame, but they have certain limitations, but it's a great way to get started. And then you also have your micro four thirds. For real estate photography, there's a completely different lineup, and this is something like the Matterport, Matterport two or three. These cameras are specifically designed for real estate photography and not only real estate, but virtual tours. So you take this camera, it's a $3,000 camera, you set it in a room, it takes a 360, you move it a few feet, you take another picture, another 360, you keep moving it like that and then their own software puts these images all together and now you can do a walkthrough virtual tour of this property or the house inside and out. So that is awesome, but it's very limited. You, you're not gonna go do portraits with a uh, Matterport camera. Uh, so as you can see, these are specific tools for different jobs. If you're into street photography, I would not recommend the Canon R5 because chances are you're gonna come home with no camera and a knife stuck in your back. This is my Canon 70, so this is a crop sensor. You can see the size difference. If I'm outside with a long lens, this is gonna get a lot of attention. If I'm traveling or doing street photography with something a little bit more discreet, no one's gonna know that it's a nice, good camera, the expensive camera, that can get awesome results. So you're gonna be a little bit safer <laughs> and you're gonna get some great results. I am gonna give you a list of cameras that I recommend and things that I recommend and I'm gonna be putting them here in the description with Amazon links. This is not sponsored, nobody's paying me, but if you do purchase anything using those links, I will get a small commission, which is gonna help support the channel. So things are down here, but I'm gonna explain why I'm getting to these, uh, why I'm gonna to get to these results and why I think these cameras will be some of the best ones out there. But first, let me start with an analogy and explain the differences. If you're looking for the best car, so what to you, what is the best car out there? 
Well, now you can see how you start asking questions because uh, what is the best off-roader? If you want to go four-wheel drive, go off into the mountains and stuff, what would you take? I personally would like a Range Rover. You might want a Jeep. So there's slight differences. You cannot take a Jeep uh, very fast on a, on a track because it, the death wobble at 75 miles an hour is gonna, or 65 miles an hour is gonna make you a little nervous. So on the track, I would take an Aston Martin. If you want to go uh, fuel consumption, what is the best vehicle out there for fuel consumption? Well, the Jeep's gonna give you about 14 miles a gallon. The Range Rover's gonna give you about eight. So I will go with the Mini Cooper. That'll probably give you about 30. And then if you want the best quality uh, and the best overall package, I think we all agree that that's a Toyota. In the camera world, we have Canon, we have Sony, we have Nikon, we have Fuji, Panasonic. There's so many manufacturers out there and they're all the same. All right, I know there's a lot of fanboys out there. I don't want to insult anybody, but to me, all these cameras are the same because they do the same things. It's just like the cars. If I show you the lineup of Land Rovers, there's 20 different options and each one is doing slightly different things. And that's the same thing with all these manufacturers. If I show you a picture from a Canon or a Nikon or a Sony, you're not going to know the, which camera that picture uh, came from. Once I process it, once I edit it and print it, Nobody's gonna tell me that this picture here is from a Sony and that one's from a Canon. You, you can't tell those differences. So each camera does their own things and every year one manufacturer is better than the other and then the other one catches up. Sony was the best at eye detect autofocus for a very long time. And then Canon came out with a better system. And now Nikon caught up and they have an amazing eye tracking and awesome camera. So, Every year there's new cameras with new technology, with new things. And to me, that's a little bit uh, irresponsible because now we're making these camera bodies disposable. We change them like we change our shirts or like we change things. And to me, that's not number one environmentally friendly or realistic. I mean, who's gonna go out and buy a $5,000 camera every year? I had this camera for 12 years and it still works. The only reason I changed it is because I needed something to do video. That's why I bought the Canon R5. I needed something that was gonna last a long time and that was gonna give me video. If we look at the Range Rover lineup, they go from the baby Range Rover, the Evoque, all the way up to the granddaddy, the big off-roader, the big luxury off-roader, the Range Rover. And everything in between is the same thing with these manufacturers. We have the baby Range Rover of Canon, the R10, and then we go all the way to the R3. So anywhere from $1,000 for the R10 to the R3, which is $6,000. And it's the same thing with the cars. And you're gonna find the same lineup, not only in Canon, but in Sony and Nikon and all the other manufacturers. So I'm gonna dive in here a little bit and com compare some of these cameras. And I'm gonna start with the Canon R10 as an APS-C crop sensor. And Nikon has the Z50 and Sony has the Alpha 6000 series. All these are very comparable cameras. They do almost the same things. They just have different features. So if you're looking for more frames per second, the Canon has the, the upper hand there. If you're looking for bigger pictures, they're all very similar, around 20 megapixels. So they're very similar. These are all around $1,000. They're entry level cameras. Like I said before, if you're into making money, if you're gonna be making money, you need to spend a little bit. I recommend buying something like this for a thousand dollars and not something like this unless you're doing uh, street photography small they're pocket size they're good for travel if you're looking to do a big variety of photography whether it's uh, landscapes portraits then i would go with the full frame or a crop sensor which is these entry level cameras the reason i called this camera my one thousand dollar mistake this is the canon m6 mark ii is because for the same price, I could have bought a Canon RP and used the same lenses that I use on this Canon R5. I didn't think about this when I was buying it because I didn't have the R5. I just wanted something for video while uh, this one uh, arrived. So I bought this and it was a thousand dollar mistake because now I rarely use it. I had it converted to infrared and it's amazing, but I don't use it like I would have if I would have had the Canon RP. Now I could have a second video camera, something to help me with the videos and do many things. So again, this is a $1,000 mistake and I don't want you guys to make the same mistake. Uh, something like the Canon Rebels, they're around the same price. They're uh, mirrored DSLRs, they have a mirror, they're older technology. 
They're great cameras, but I don't want you to make that $1,000 mistake. Getting something like the Canon R10 would be an awesome camera. Same thing with the Nikon Z50 or the Sony 6000 series. These are all interchangeable lenses and they can take bigger lenses that you might upgrade later down in your photography career. So keep that in mind. Think about your future as a photographer and not where you are right now. Now, all these cameras that I've recommended so far are brand new cameras. The, uh, the Canon R10, the Nikon Z50, or the Sony Alpha 60, 6000 lineup. These are brand new cameras. And when you buy a uh, Range Rover, if you want the baby Range Rover, you might not want the brand new one. So you could get a Range Rover Sport that's a couple years old for the same price of the brand new Range Rover. And in this case, I'm talking about the Canon RP or the Sony uh, A7 II. These are great cameras for the same price. So, you know, these are full frame cameras, great features for the same price of one of the new uh, of a brand new baby Range Rover. So this is something to keep in mind. There's older options that are, just because they're older, they're only two or three years old. That doesn't mean they're bad cameras. They're amazing cameras, but the technology advances so fast that these get discontinued or the price drops. Now, there's other cameras out there under $1,000. Canon has the Canon M6 Mark II or the M50 Mark II, and these are great cameras. And the reason I'm not talking about these cameras is because I want you to get started in photography with the best of the best. Uh, something like the Canon R10, to me, it's way better than the M50 Mark II, and so is the Canon RP or some of these other options out there. So. You know, again, all these cameras have different features, just like the Range Rover, whether you get the XL or, or Pure or all, whatever Range Rover calls them. They're different models for different reasons. Each one of these options is gonna help you get better pictures, but you need to understand the type of photography you're gonna do to be able to choose the features in that camera that are gonna help you instead of hinder your photography. So let's move on to the next uh, point here on the list. Now we're gonna compare the Range Rover Sport lineup. And this is anywhere from the Canon R7 all the way to the R5. It's a, it's a, a lineup because just like Range Rover, we have the base uh, Range Rover Sport all the way up to the autobiography, which in this case is gonna be the R5. But the base Range Rover Sport is gonna be the Canon R7. So it is a crop sensor, a smaller engine, and it costs about $1,500. If you wanna go all the way to the R5, we're talking $3,500. In between, there's the um, R6 Mark II, which is a great camera. Uh, it's very similar to the R5. It has better focus and slightly smaller files. I think it's at 30 megapixels. I'm gonna write all that here. Nikon has the same thing. So Nikon has a Z5 at $1,300. And then the Z6 Mark II at $2,000 and the Z7 Mark II for $3,000. So Nikon has the same lineup as Canon, slightly lower prices. And then Sony has a very similar lineup with the 7C at 1800, uh, the Alpha 7 Mark IV at 2500, and the 7 R5 at 3900. So Nikon seems to be on the least expensive side with the same or very similar lineup. Sony has a little bit more expensive cameras canon is somewhere in the middle now i don't prefer one brand over the other i've always used canon i'm familiar with canon and the reason i have them is because they feel great in my hands ergonomics all the prices all your expenses is going to go into your lenses uh, i waited for the r5 because i already had some lenses and that's where your money goes that lens that's on this camera is almost as expensive as the camera itself these other lenses, that's a $2,500 lens and it goes great with this camera. And same thing with this one, that's another $22,000 lens. So all these lenses is where your money is gonna go. The camera body is not as important as long as it can hold the big lenses. And later on I will change once this camera can do what I ask it to do, which at this point it's, it's a long way into the future. I know that there's probably gonna be an R5 Mark II coming out this year. They're due, Nikon has a better camera right now, and so does Sony, so I think Canon is just waiting for the right moment to release the R5 Mark II. Am I gonna buy it? Probably not. Do I want it? Yes, I mean, I have the Range Rover Sport. It's a couple of years old. Do I want the new one? Probably. But I'm not gonna go out and buy it just because it's out there. I This one does exactly what I need it to do and more. So until it doesn't, I'm, I don't need a new camera. And now let's go to the granddaddy, the big Range Rover, the luxury hotel on the road. 
I'm not gonna spend too much too much time on this because again, if you're gonna buy a, a $6,000 camera, then you're probably not watching this video. But Canon has that lineup too. Canon has the R3 at $5,600. Sony has the Alpha One at $6,500. And Nikon has the Z9 at $5,500. So again, these are very similar price ranges. And what is the difference in all these cameras? Not much. It's which one has a heated steering wheel and which one has the reverse camera? Which one has the cooler in the center compartment? Or which one has the LED lights that glow blue when I open the door? This is what we're looking at when we're comparing the Canon to the Sony to the Nikon. They all have the same, very similar features. It's just which one fits best for what you do. Now, there is one more option out there that's like the Toyota that has everything all around that's comfortable, that can go off-road, that can go fast, and can do everything you ask it to do. And that is the Lumix, the Panasonic Lumix S5 II. This is a $2,000 full frame camera. It takes Leica lenses, it takes Sigma lenses, and it has its own Lumix lenses. This camera is awesome. <laughs> it has uh, great picture quality, great video quality and features. So it's an it's a all around camera, which is why I'm saying it's a Toyota and it does everything you ask it to do. So again, this is not sponsored. The reason I'm talking about the Lumix uh, S5 Mark II is because it's brand new. It's a great option. Uh, for the price of this camera, the Canon R5 with a couple of lenses, I probably could have bought two Lumix cameras. This last year, they released a brand new camera, the, uh, the Mark II has awesome autofocus, face detect. Uh, it's it just uh, an incredible tool that will do everything you ask for, just like the Toyota. I also wanna talk a little bit and give you some advice. If you're gonna start in the photography business, stay away from cheap cameras and cheap lenses. You need good quality gear because they're gonna give you way better results. There is a difference. A lens is a hundred bucks or a lens is $2,000. There's a big difference in the optics. It's just like uh, eyeglasses. You can go very cheap or you could actually see where you and read. So these are the same thing happens in the camera world. It's the same thing that happens in the car world. You know, uh, there's, there's a reason why certain things are more expensive and it's not just a brand. I have seen professional photographers out there that work for different companies shooting with a Rebel, a Canon Rebel. Uh, they get paid, they make money, but that's also limiting their photography. I mean, maybe not to them. To them, they're doing great. I want more. Staying away from the cheap things is gonna actually make you feel better about your gear. There's a psychological thing. And then it's also gonna push you to get better pictures. I know this might sound a little bit vain or a little bit out there, but when somebody sees a good camera, a big camera, when you go to do a photo shoot, they're gonna treat you differently than if you walk in with a small camera. And I know this is all appearances, you might not even know how to use the big camera, but people are gonna pay you more if you look like you know what you're doing or if you have the right gear. Again, this is superficial, this is shallow, but it works. So again, guys, I know money is a very big thing and money is the first worry that we all have when it comes to investing or buying camera gear. Not everybody has three or four or $5,000 to invest in new equipment. I recommend buying the best that you can afford uh, and then start making money with that thing immediately. If you buy a $3,000 camera and you don't know what to do with it, start shooting stock shoot stock photography. I have a lot of videos explaining different ideas, different tips, and I have more videos coming. Shoot stock until you learn your gear. And if you wanna keep doing it, go ahead. It's a great residual income, but it takes time. That's why I'm saying start with stock photography, learn your gear, and then go out to your families and friends and do uh, portrait sessions for a hundred bucks. Uh, you, you could do three or four in a week, and now that's, you know, in a month, you're gonna have half your gear paid off. Once you learn enough about how to do photography, you can shoot weddings. Uh, if you have an understanding with the bride and groom that you're not the best wedding photographer out there, you can charge 500 bucks to $2,000. A lot of professionals will charge well over five, $6,000 for a wedding shoot. If you don't know what you're doing, you can get away with $1,000 or $2,000. But as long as, as long as everybody's in the same page and they know that they're not gonna get the magazine wedding shots, then that's fine. Uh, a lot of people don't have the budget for a $5,000 wedding photographer, but they might pay you $2,000 if you're just learning. And that's gonna help you offset the price of your camera gear. You can also do product photography, have videos on product photography, sign up to uh, Fiverr and get products shipped to you. There's so many different ways that you can start generating money from your equipment. And this is what I wanna tell you, this is what I've done. When I bought the Canon R5, I spent 
five or six thousand dollars. I bought three lenses. That was almost ten thousand dollars. But I applied what I learned. I went and I shot uh, for more restaurants. I, I put myself out there more and more. I shot. I've shot a couple of weddings. I've done quite a few things to recuperate the money that I invested in this. And within two months, it was already paid for, because I went after it. I work best under pressure. If I put things on a credit card, I know I have to pay it off. Don't do this. I'm not a financial advisor. That works for me because I like to work under pressure. And that is how I made money with the Canon 7D. I bought this camera and a big lens, uh, 70 to 200, 2.8, very expensive lens. And I started shooting stock photography. I got thousands of pictures from that camera and that lens within a month that money started paying the credit card and then slowly it paid for it, it paid everything off i guess what i'm trying to say here is that if you're gonna buy a camera for business treat it like a business don't just you know have it put it on the shelf and then don't use it if you're buying a camera as a hobby then whatever camera that fits your hand is gonna be more than fine today's technology is incredible all these cameras are durable they can they can withstand pretty much anything but again if you're looking to get into a photography business make sure uh, you use it as a business tool. Now, many of you might be wondering why I didn't mention Pentax in this video. And that is, there's a good reason, hear me out. The reason I did not mention Pentax is because for me, Pentax is like the Tesla of the camera industry. That was a joke, that was a joke. I, I know I just lost two subscribers. I would buy a Pentax if I had to. All these camera manufacturers are the same. I focused on the main ones because that's what's out there but all of them are gonna do an amazing job. So for now, let's focus on what's important, and that is subscribing to this video and clicking the like button. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, and by the way, if anybody knows anybody at Range Rover or Aston Martin, uh, my email is down here in the description. Let, uh, I would take a free car if they want to.